Today we're going to look at various force problems on an inclined plane. One thing to note is this is not an intro video. I do expect you to know the basics of an inclined plane. So for example, um, if we have a mass here, we know gravity is trying to um, pull straight down on it. Okay, let's say we have an angle theta. You should be able to resolve this into its components. In other words, part of gravity is pulling down this way part of gravity is pulling down this way and the value here on the the sliding down the ramp would be mg sine theta and this one would be mg cosine theta so if what I just did was super confusing uh, go back and watch one of my previous videos so I'm gonna kinda assume that you know that for now so let's go ahead and shrink this down and we'll go ahead and set up this problem. So in all these problems I'm going to be giving you a velocity, some motion, I'm going to be giving you a force, and what I'm going to really be asking you to do is to just kind of set up um, the FBD as well as the um, kind of the X summation, kind of the equation of motion for the problem. In this particular problem, we have a force going up the ramp here, and the, the block basically is also going to be moving up the ramp. So I'm pushing it this way, and it, it, the block's going to be moving up this way. So let's go ahead and do our free body diagram first. Um, so let's just attach those uh, forces that we just solved earlier. So this one would be mg cosine of the angle and this one would be mg sine of the angle and then what we're going to want to do is figure out all the other forces so um, obviously we have a force going up the ramp that's drawn here and then we have our normal force that the ramp is uh, pushing up keeping the block on the ramp and then lastly we have some friction and friction is going to be in this direction So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of this. So when I draw this out, when I do my summation here, um, we're just going to add up all our horizontal forces. And so that's just a matter of looking at what forces we have. So we have our applied force here. We'll just simply call that F. Uh, we have our friction force here that's in the opposite direction. So we are going to subtract here. So we're going to go minus friction, and then we have the component of gravity coming down the ramp. So we're going to subtract then minus mg sine theta. Okay, remember all of this, these three terms here, are going to be equal to mass times acceleration. So let's look at situation two. In this situation, um, everything's almost exactly the same except this time um, instead of the the object moving up the ramp it's going to be sliding down the ramp so imagine for example um, you know in that last problem maybe you're pushing let's imagine this is like a refrigerator or something and you're sliding the refrigerator up the ramp and then in this other situation, imagine the refrigerator, it's trying to go down the ramp, and actually, in fact, it is going down the ramp, but you're, you're right behind here, and you're pushing back against it, trying to keep it from crushing you, essentially. So you would be still applying a force this way, but um, the, the actual velocity of the refrigerator is sliding down the ramp. So slightly different. Um, let's go ahead and do this one. So in this problem, everything else, is, everything's basically the same. Um, what we are going to go ahead and do is draw in the forces again. So again, we have this force due to gravity. We have this force due to gravity. I think for simplicity, I'm going to just call this F sub Y and this F sub X. Uh, you can see over here kind of what those values are up in the, the upper left. Um, and then again, we have our normal force. But the big difference is, since the velocity is coming down this way, um, that means friction is going to oppose the, the motion of this object. And so friction is going to now be up the ramp rather than coming down the ramp. So when we set up our summation for this, 
uh, let's go ahead and do that. So again, we have the force going up the ramp. This time though, friction, instead of subtracting friction, we are gonna be adding friction. So that should be plus friction. And then we'll go ahead and subtract that component of gravity, Fx. Remember, Fx is, what is it, mg sine theta right here. And then we set that equal to ma. In the last problem, I didn't actually solve for friction. Uh, so let's just take a moment to do that here. Remember, friction is equal to mu times normal force. And in this problem, the normal force, here's our normal force right here, we'll notice its counteracting force is that component of gravity in the, the vertical direction. So in other words, the normal force should equal F sub Y. And as we just stated earlier, F normal, uh, or so I should say F Y is going to be equal to Mg cosine theta. So just write that as Mg cos theta and hopefully you can then see friction should be equal to mu times mg cosine theta okay so if you're asked to derive this fully you would want to just go ahead and substitute in that value up front so for this problem let's imagine that we have a block on our incline and this time we're, if we were just to let this go uh, this block would obviously slide down the ramp right but let's imagine this let's imagine that we push with the force not up the ramp but we're going to push the block right against the ramp and we're going to push with enough force so actually that the block does not move so in other words we're going to say the velocity is equal to zero so what I would like you to do is go ahead and pause the video and see if you can solve this one on your own. Hopefully you took the time to do that. Let's go ahead and solve this. Um, our FVD pretty much looks the same as we've been making it. So again, we have the uh, component going into the ramp FY. We have the component coming down the ramp fx. Now again, the key thing here is that there's a velocity wanting to come down the ramp. Now it's not actually moving, it just wants to move down the ramp. The thing that keeps it from moving is friction. So there must be a frictional force going this way. Okay, so there actually isn't a velocity. We just need that to help us figure out the direction of the friction. And then of course we have the normal force going up. Now the interesting thing to notice here is I am not actually holding this block up the ramp. Like there's no horizontal force. There's nothing going up this way that's keeping it up the ramp due to me directly. So the thing that is keeping it up is friction, right? Now notice when I push down, what I'm doing is I'm increasing the normal force. So the harder I push down on this block, the more the normal force is going to start to push back up this way. Okay, and by increasing the normal force, remember in that last little section we said friction is equal to mu times normal force. In this case, we're talking about a static friction because it's not moving. So if I increase the normal force here, I'm actually increasing the force of friction. And if I increase it enough, I can get it to equal the horizontal force so that it is in balance. So when we do our little summation here, um, this one we're going to have friction going up, okay, and we'll go minus that component of gravity going down, that equals ma, but since we said the velocity is zero, we actually know this, the acceleration would be zero as well if it's not moving. So in other words, the friction force should equal the horizontal gravitational force. Okay, let's keep going just to make this interesting. So as we stated before, this would be mu times the normal force. Well, what is the normal force? Well, the normal force is not mg cosine as we did last time. So in fact, we're going to have to figure out what that normal force is. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So the normal force is not just simply uh, the, the y component of gravity in this problem. Because if you notice here, we do have, we're pushing down. And again, as we just said, as we push down with more force, the normal force actually increases. So to do this, we're going to actually just do our y summation. So in our y summation, we kind of just assumed it in the previous problems. This one, though, we're going to go ahead and do it. So we have the normal force going up. And then we're going to subtract out that applied force F. And then we're going to subtract out that Y component of gravity. Okay. And as usual, this is equal to MA. Uh, since there's no vertical motion up or down, it's actually no motion at all, but um, specifically in the Y direction, then this again is just going to equal to zero. So notice then that our normal force is equal to F plus F y. So if we go back to our friction, friction then is going to be equal to mu times that normal force, which would be F plus Fy. Remember that friction, as we said that last problem, friction is equal to Fx. Okay. And anyways, depending on what they're asking for, they actually, usually they'll say like, how much force do you need to keep it from moving? So you can kind of do the algebra here and rearrange it. I'm going to leave it up to you to do the algebra in this problem to figure that out. So one last problem. Um, for this one, actually, I'm not going to solve it. I want you to see if you can do it on your own. So imagine that we're pulling this up. Let's say we're attaching this by a rope. And we're pulling it up at an angle. So again, let's call this theta. Let's just call this, why don't we call this alpha here? So that's the angle here, alpha. So we're pulling up at an angle here. And let's imagine the velocity is going up the ramp, V going up this way. So again, what I would like you to see if you can do, see if you can find the free body diagram. And secondly, go ahead and see if you can do the summation. Okay. So fx equals ma. All right, I'm going to leave this one up to you to do. Uh, I'll probably, why don't you do it on your book, and then we'll go over it in class, and we'll see if you got it right.